I'm going to show you some things uh, relating to energy. In this case, we're going to actually go further within energy and talk about kinetic and potential. Now first, uh, maybe it helps us to just uh, define what we mean by kinetic energy. We mean energy associated with movement. So something that means kinetic, it means movement. So in other words, anything moving has kinetic energy. Maybe I'll say that actually. So anything that moves has kinetic energy. So it all depends on how fast it's moving, and then you can know how much kinetic energy it has. Uh, well, as long as you know its mass. So anything that moves has kinetic energy. So let's look at the symbol we use for it. Turns out we use EK, or sometimes people write you know, kinetic energy like this. Kinetic energy, sometimes people write energy with a little subscript kinetic. I like this one because then all energies are energy with an E, and then you just put a little subscript to tell you what type of energy. So in this case, AK. It's measured in joules still. So it turns out we have a nice easy equation for it. So maybe I'll define it here. So EK equals 1 half mv squared. So that's our equation, where of course EK is the kinetic energy, and that's measured in joules, just to be complete here, so measured in joules. M equals the mass of the object, so that will be measured in kilograms. So this could be any object, or it doesn't matter what it is. And V, that's going to be its speed, which is going to be in meters per second. So as long as you know something's speed, in other words, how fast it's going, and you know its mass, then you know its kinetic energy. So that's one of the key uh, basic things that we're going to look at here within energy is kinetic energy. So maybe we can do an example. Um, I have a, a silly example here. So I've just been launched from a cannon, and my speed is 30 meters per second. If my mass is 75 kilograms, what will be my kinetic energy? So let's say we look at a situation like this. So here we go, we've got some sort of cannon here. So maybe this is a cannon like this, and you know it's got some big opening like that. Maybe it's got a little stand like this. And basically uh, what happened then is this thing right here just launched me. So here I go, I'm flying through the air. And I'm probably quite happy about that, I suppose, or maybe I'm not, I don't know. But anyway, uh, this is me uh, flying through the air with this certain velocity here. So V equals 30 meters per second. That's me flying through the air here. Now of course if you think about what path am I going to take, of course I'm going to do some weird path like this right here. You know, I'm eventually going to go splat and my speed it turns out is going to be different depending on what's happening but let's just look at this snapshot because it turns out my velocity here, uh, it turns out I can define not only a speed but also a velocity. Turns out, I mean, it could be really complicated. We could say, you know, how how long does it take me before I hit the ground, or what's my maximum height? It turns out, if you understand about kinematics in two dimensions, then you could totally solve this. But what I just wanted to point out, though, is that my my speed here, my little v here without the vector, my little speed, is going to be totally different depending on where I am in my path. Now let's let's not care about that though. Let's be a little bit sloppy here and say, you know what? Let's just look at at this snapshot right here at some moment when my speed is exactly 30 meters per second. Then I know my kinetic energy. That's easy to calculate. Maybe I'll just uh, take away the little uh, dots here because maybe that just confuses things. So at this exact snapshot right here, well, I can easily figure out my kinetic energy then. E k equals well just half m v squared. So I just need to know then what's my mass. So it's half times my mass, which is 75, times my speed, which is 30, and don't forget to square it. Remember, the only things in regular SI units can go here. Remember, SI means a système international, so that's the international units. Um, so only kilograms can be here, and only meters per second can go here. So if I gave you the mass in some other unit, or if I gave you the speed in, I don't know, kilometers per hour, you'd have to convert them before you worked with this. Now the most common mistake I think that students make, um, I'll actually do it. I'll do what most students do. They say, all right, great. I'm going to try to calculate this. So keep in mind I'm about to do something that's wrong. 
So I would say, okay, 75, enter. And then maybe I would, uh, I don't know, maybe I would divide by 2. Or, you know, I could multiply by 0.5. That's the same thing. And I'd multiply that answer by 30, and I'd say, great, my kinetic energy is 1,125 joules. Seems about right, doesn't it? But the problem is I forgot the squared. A lot of students forget that. So it's really important to not forget about the squared. So again, I'll just do the 75, and I'll multiply that by 0.5. You'll see that gives me the same thing as dividing by 2. Uh, so that wasn't the problem before. In my last step, that was okay. But here I have to multiply by 30 squared. And if you want to think about it, well, 30 squared is just 30 times 30, so that's going to be a 9, so that'll be 900. So it'll be 33750. That's how many joules I will have. So 3,000, or sorry, 33,750 joules. Now, the problem is, though, is that I'm not allowed to use that many significant figures. If you look at this, if I just want to be careful here, I've got two values that I'm allowed to use here. I've got two values. So that means I'm going to say my kinetic energy then. I'm only allowed to use two values to write it. So in this case, I could say it's 3 point, uh, let's say 4 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. So I could say it's the same thing as 3.4 times 10 to the 4. That should work here. So I could say that's approximately. It's not exactly, that's why I didn't put the exactly equal. I put a little dot here. Maybe you can put a little squiggly equal. Some people like that. So we have approximately 3.4 times 10 to the 4 joules. Let me just make sure I did that right. I could always check it because I can see over here. Is this really 3.4 times 10 to the 4? Yes. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that would be my kinetic energy because I'm sort of flying through the air. Now I can also deal with potential energy. So potential energy is something that's, uh, that's stored energy. So that's what potential energy means. Now, um, we're going to look mainly at gravitational potential energy. So we're going to say this, gravitational. This is the most common one, but it's certainly not the only one. So gravitational potential energy. And in fact, um, what we're going to do is we're going to assume it's on Earth. But a lot of people, they use this. They say EP, or sometimes they say um, gravitational potential energy. Sometimes they write GPE or just PE for potential energy. But all this, it's measured in joules. So let's take a look then at the equation that we use. So if we're talking about on Earth, at least, I'm going to write it with an EP like this. It's going to be M times G times H. That's going to be the equation here. So this one right here, then it's important to define it. So EP, that's going to be the, in this case, the gravitational potential energy. And we're going to have to say on Earth. And that's going to be measured in, whoops, I suppose I shouldn't have had uh, brackets there. Then it might look confusing. So I'll just say, no, don't forget, it's also on Earth. And the units that we use for gravitational potential energy, well, it's in joules. M is still the mass, so that's in kilograms. And G is the acceleration due to gravity and we're going to say on Earth. It's important, and it's also at sea level. Uh, so this will be measured in meters per second squared, and it turns out that number is usually written as 9.81 meters per second squared. This is the number that's usually used. And we have H, which is your height. And we're going to assume it's above ground, but it turns out uh, you can define it lots of different ways. Because you could say, what's your gain in potential energy by raising something a certain distance? So then you have to look at your distance, in, in other words, your difference in height. So some people like to write it like this, EP equals mg delta H, where delta H is a change in height. That's also fine. Okay, so some people like to write it like this. 